Hi Elvis fans, Tom Brown here inside the guest house at Graceland and uh, we have someone very special on the episode right now. Um, if you're an Elvis movie fan, you know that uh, of all the movies that he made, that, that he ha always had these kind of roles where he was playing like race car drivers and frogmen and ranchers and all kinds of bizarre things. But we've got someone here that was with him in one of his movies and oh my goodness, you know a little bit about Elvis Presley. Uh, Laurel Goodwin is with us and uh, the movie that you made with Elvis Presley was a very important movie in your career because it kind of started it. Certainly, film-wise, yeah. I had uh, it was the it was my introducing role. Yeah, which meant I knew nothing <laughs> <laughs> about you know how the actual shooting and filming went. I yeah. hadn't done even television or commercials or anything uh, until that particular picture. So there was just a wee bit of anxiety yeah. going on. But Elvis being Elvis, he made it much more easy than I anticipated it to be, just because he was such a sweetheart. Yeah. And uh, you know, and you, I was not dumb, and I had dumb theater. Mm -hmm. And if you tell me to be here at a certain point, then, then I'll make the mark. You were one of the last contract players. I mean, yes. the, the the people who were groomed by the studio to work in different projects under the old schooling right. sort of syndrome. I was one, of, I believe, in the industry, last of the total contract players because Paramount was still pretty much intact. Mm -hmm. They had everything but a drama class going on, and they sent me off to one of the fancy ones. And or one of the ones that was considered important mm -hmm. at that time, and they actually hired me because I photographed so young, and to and they wanted me to play very young, but they wouldn't have to have me have schooling on. So I think right. a bit about knowing more about the business later on. I think that had <laughs> something to do with my initially going under contract. Yeah. But I was under a grooming contract, which also meant they got me very dirt cheap, mm -hmm. and it was with options and it's the old studio contract. There were some s contracts going on in town, but they were like with Universal and such, and it was options for certain shows. Mm -hmm. They didn't actually get involved in doing a publicity, you know, right. brouhaha right. and such, where Paramount was doing that, which is how I ended up with the Presley film, because uh, Hal Wallace walked into the studio where the studio photographer, full-time, mm -hmm. took a bunch of studio shots, old-fashioned studio shots, and they had them on the wall, and he said, who's she? And, how come I haven't met her and was brought over because they were thinking of Dolores Hart at the time. Oh, Mother Dolores. Mother Dolores. Yes. And uh, so they told me later, the choreographer <laughs> on the show, he said, yeah, I was talking to Hal and said, oh, we've already done with Dolores. That's dull. Why don't we try the new girl? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's how I actually finally got hired. And the part of being a contract player is that you're pretty much, they, hand, they go, you're doing this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No control over your life. Yeah. You'll be here at 4 o'clock tomorrow. You'll be here. Uh, we're sending a script in the middle of the night, show up. Mm -hmm. you and, and your film with Elvis has one of, it just, it just cuts to the chase. The title of his, of <laughs> I thought it got it. Girls, Girls, Girls. It just, this, you know what, this is just what it is. And it's just a wonderful romp. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of fun. It's a wonderful romp where it's very wholesome and it's fun. It's got some good songs. It's got beautiful scenery. Yeah. 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 And, and you guys, what was he like? I mean, you would, uh, very new and you know probably it's, wondering how this big well, star was going to be uh, yeah how he's going to react and i knew that you know uh, i'm not going to win the fight <laughs> right i was told a couple of pieces of very wise advice one was well laurel all i can tell you is when you're over there because i did the initial shooting very first time we were already in hawaii so i didn't even have the comfort zone that i'd gotten familiar with at the studio wow and she said uh just remember that whatever you're doing try and make it balanced each one do the best job you can because they're not going to go with your best performance they're going to go with <laughs> Elvis's best performance so if you said yeah rub your nose or scratch your neck or something like that that isn't going to work well that may end up on that great big screen with all that music yeah. so I tried to keep it more like you were doing theater except in theater you start from the beginning you go through the whole thing and you do the thing. Mm -hmm. this because that was where my training was uh, this was okay. You get to, uh, uh, okay. Back up, and we do it uh, uh, again. Just so you have to do uh, uh, a like each time, or change it so it doesn't get too bad, and hope you don't do one that's mm -hmm. awful and is going to end up on all that great big screen. Now, what people love in Hollywood, they they love a movie that's shot on a, on a set on a soundstage because they can control everything. But you guys, you were out on location, and that's when anything can happen and outdoors it usually does yes <laughs> and it usually takes a while to get to a location too 
Oh, yes. Well, we had several things. One of the things, we would meet at the Waikiki Yacht Harbor, uh, the private yacht harbor, and get on boats there, and then go out to where the big boat was and shoot out in the water for hours and hours at uh -huh. a time. So that was part of it. And then when we moved to the beach, which is Paradise Island, mm -hmm. that was on the other island. So we transferred over to Hilo and had like a two-hour commute to where the studios actually came in and widened the road so they could get the, some of the equipment trucks through wow. to this beautiful black sand beach is what you see as Paradise Cove. And you were getting paid for this? Not to much. be out on, yeah, but the look studio at owned me. They got money. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's hard work. <laughs> but the, the only skill I really needed on those levels was to make sure I spread my budget properly. But yes. I was always able, you give me a dollar, I saved a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Up until like, men came into my life and then that changed. Yeah. But <laughs> now Elvis, you know, he has this effect on women, uh, fans, and he also had an effect, I'm assuming, on his leading ladies. So what was your initial reaction in, in working with him, meeting, meeting, seeing him the first time, just that aura? Was, did you see that when he walked in the room? Well, no, because he was sitting in a makeup chair. <laughs> just showed up at work in and the morning? And he was in a makeup chair with the, you know, like you were at a barber or something yeah. with the thing of over the costume and I walked behind him and go, hello, well, it was very nice to meet you. And he go, nice to meet you, Laurel. And he went back and I got in the chair and I got my makeup on. And that was the very initial meeting. And then after we got out from the thing, it was very nice to meet you. And mm -hmm. he was very, his beautiful, polite and lovely self. And uh, then for the next few days, we get in the boat, go out in the middle of the water where we got to kind of know each other and rap and chat and sort right. of get a little more comfortable and familiar. And we became very good friends. That's something that... But I wasn't knee-knocking. I wasn't knee-knocking with anybody. Yeah. I mean, I was, not, I was too busy with my life and my work that I was doing. And uh, I was also a bit of a theater snob. Mm -hmm. Showbiz is kind of weird. This opportunity came up and I get it. Right. But, you know, the show is the thing, not the actor. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Know? It's about the play. It's the about the play. Yeah. And that was my thing. And Elvis was really kind of into that. He was very sweet and dear, and he kind of uh, deferred to me when it came to the drama oh, stuff, yeah. which I was flattered by. God knows I wouldn't want to compete with him on the singing level. <laughs> he did. No problem there. But he was really utterly charming, and we got along wonderfully. We became good friends. And I've, I've read about your relationship with him and your friendship, and you said you've, you almost felt like a big brother, like very protective toward you and, and was comfortable around you. That's funny. I sort of felt that way towards him, that he was my kid brother and I needed to protect him. Yeah. I came from San Francisco. I grew up in a very sophisticated kind of world, and I felt that his world was much more sheltered, hmm. as big a to-do as he was and worried about whether or not they were going to treat him properly and was he going to be a happy wow. person. And I wasn't looking for a husband. I was not interested in husbandry or big hot romance or <laughs> any of that. I was interested in the play mm -hmm. <laughs> and being friends and liking him and having him like me right. and make him comfortable because that makes the work process easier. And I had heard to the, the notorious you know, entourage mm -hmm. and then that's what I had to work out for. I never had a problem. I went and I treated them as I try to treat most people. Right. And I didn't over challenge them. I didn't threaten them in any way. I wasn't drooling all over Elvis and chewing his ear lobes mm -hmm. or any of that. So after a day or two, they started treating me like they treated Elvis. We had a great time. Yeah. We used to play touch football and run around the lava rock <laughs> and, you know, we had fun. We he had was really time. comfortable around you and, and there was a, t a story that I, I read or heard somewhere that, that even on a day you weren't working, he's like, no, she's got to be there. What a compliment. Well, yes, very much yeah, so. Yeah. But he was really, you know, very shy. He had a very big shy element in his personality and in his life. When, uh, yeah, there was, because I was on call every day, and usually really early. But that's okay, that was fine. <laughs> Easier then than it is now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there was one day, and I looked, and I, oh, I'm not in any of these scenes. I'm going to have a day off. How weird. And we were back on the mainland, because we'd been away for a while. And we are back on the mainland. I thought, oh, good, maybe I can get some, you know, sort of things tidied up, because we were doing six days a week while we were on location. And wow. so the AD comes to me and hands me a, Worksheet, and I said, How come I'm on call? I don't have any, I'm not in any of these. He said, Elvis would really like you to be on set tomorrow. I said, Oh, he said, Yeah, we're doing some of the cafe scenes. There's going to be a lot of extras and such. Hmm. And he would really appreciate it if you would 
come. And I said, oh, sure, if he wants to be there, absolutely. I taught him to twist. Really? Yes. You gave Elvis dance lessons? Wow. The twist was yeah. a whole different thing. I mean, Elvis was Elvis, but <laughs> the twist was something entirely different, and that was the hot dance at the time. Yeah. So I kind of taught him to twist. And you'll see a bit of it in, uh -huh. when you see the shooting. <laughs> and so I came in, and while we're shooting, and he's up on stage, I'm back behind the camera. I didn't have to do makeup or anything. I'm having a heck of a time, and I'm back there just wailing away with the twist and being all so fun. And he's kind of playing to me, which I also found very flattering. So he felt he just wanted you there, so he knew in this crowded scene that he had someone that loved him and wanted to be there for him. Precisely. Wow. Precisely. And I consider that very precious. Yeah. And you also have uh, an amazing uh, dance sequence with him. The walls have ears. You, I, you look at that today and you think of the technology at the time of what movie special effects were. And uh, that's quite a, it's quite a complicated, it's almost, it's not Fred Astaire going around in a circle in a yeah. room, but it's up there in. And you've got men standing behind the walls with hammers and things and shooting and this is supposed to drop and all of that and this is going to fall down and stuff from the sea. And we have to not kill each other or give each other black eyes while we're bouncing around this room with all this stuff happening. It was a challenge. It was fun. The two of us had a great time. Uh, I think he stepped on my toes more than I stepped on his <laughs> until, until we kind of got it down. After that sequence was shot, my feet needed a lot of Band-Aids. <laughs> <laughs> but you just keep going no oh, matter what absolutely, happens. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially because there's so much involved in it. If, you, if Oh, something hit my foot. Then we got to set up all the props again and the walls shaking and all that. No. Yeah. So you just go through it and hope you get the shot. In your career, I mean, this, this Girls, 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 your first film, but also, you, if there are any Star Trek fans out there, and I know we are, uh, you were in the cage pilot of Star Trek. So you've really been one of those actors that, I mean, actors want to always be remembered for some role. You've got two iconic roles in, in two different fan bases that I'm know sort of <laughs> everything about your, your, everything about your movie and your television show and Star Trek, they have, they know more about it than you do, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you come up to me, quote me whole, I'm going, God, did I say that? Oh, all right. You know, in yeah. this, really, truly, you're absolutely right. They do. And it's kind of fun because when, I mean, I've known people for quite some time before they, figure out that I've actually had a career of any kind. And as when it comes up, I usually say, well, yeah, actually, I'm kind of an old collector's item. I go, oh, what have you done? And then all of a sudden, a whole new version of interest. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it is kind of fun. And I, so I guess I've, I've made my mark on, on immortality. Yes. Now, as we sit here and talk, we are in Memphis at Graceland, and it's following your autograph session that you just had with fans that went for over three hours. So I have to think there were some people waiting to meet you from all of your, your work, especially Star Trek and, and Girls, Girls, Girls. Any interesting stories of, of people that you might have run into or fans just wanting to say thank you? Only the distance, and most of them were thankful and oh. so, so enjoyed your program because we had the interview shortly yeah. before these fans came to sign for signatures. And most of them were so delighted by the whole evening and all of us girls <laughs> that that was the, what they m mentioned most of all, all about Elvis. There was very little mention of uh, Star Trek. Could care less, but, well, of course you have your diehards. Here. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, but not just here. I met two from Scandinavia, three from Germany, at least from wow. Germany. I occasionally pick up on an accent and say, don't worry. Ireland, purposely came from Ireland for this week's events. I mean, it's just, of course, it was amazing to me back then when, when the film was released and I was doing publicity tours and such for the film of the range of the people who loved him. There was everything yeah. from five-year-olds to 105, practically. I mean, it was, and I look at this group and and for that time, I mean, I, there's more now, I guess, because of the internet of sort of the mixed age thing. Right, right. But it wasn't like all 20 years old or all 30 years old. It was an enormous range. I don't know anybody that has had that kind of appeal. <laughs> it still goes and on. And continues. And still goes on. There was a little nine-year-old today who was all thrilled and excited. And was, it's your my favorite movie. And I'm thinking, my Lord, honey, your parents weren't even thought of. <laughs> well, I have to say, girls, girls, girls. Was nominated ones. for a Golden Globe Award. It was only beaten by The Music Man. 
as a musical. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes. See, so, everybody else knows more about see, my career there than you I know. do. Like, <laughs> like me doing all yes. my research and reading about. I mean, I grew up knowing all this stuff and, and really, you know, watching these movies and wondering who these people were. You also have uh, one of the great distinctions is there exists a lot of stills from this movie of you and Elvis and Stella Stevens like doing all these different poses and in costume and you guys looking longingly at each other because you had a love triangle thing going on. It, it's one thing to be an actor and to have a part and to have dialogue and to prepare for that role and to go film that scene, but I have to think shooting stills like that, that you, 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 look at, <laughs> you look at them and you go, what are they thinking when they're shooting these? Well, they want all these things because back then, recall, fan magazines. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, fan magazines and authors and writers and gossip columnists and all this kind of stuff. And they had to feed them a certain amount of material mm -hmm. to put into their magazines. And so you had formal shoots at the studio where you did these press and publicity shots for whatever use they want. They had me in Santa Claus outfits. And you know, each season, of one day I go in and one day I'm doing Easter, Thanksgiving, <laughs> Santa Claus, and something else. And costumes akin to that, that mm -hmm. they would press to the press releases. Yeah. It was a whole different world in that way. And the, like I said, those, those photographs just, <laughs> just capture uh, you know, a, an element of time that, yeah. is, that is passed, that is, but uh, you, you look at those photos and they just seem so innocent and they seem so fun. You, you had an opportunity with Elvis that not a lot of people had. On those commutes to the set, you had time exactly. with him. And there was no one wanting him to do anything else. He had to get from point A to point B, and that could take two hours, two and a half. And you had an opportunity to oh, really... Oh yeah, we would sit back and rap and chat. And we would talk and talk about it and philosophize, and then I'd make him sing a song every once in a while. Oh, really? And oh. needle him when uh, he didn't have all the lyrics. <laughs> I'd feed him to him and help him say, how can you do that, Elvis? You probably made four million dollars off of this record. So I'd feed him the words and he would sing the song. And it was a great thrill because he had a God's gift voice. Yeah. Just a cappella was even almost better than the, the, al the records that I had heard prior to that. Yeah. No, he was a delight. And we did. We, we talked about all kinds of things. I mean, he had issues with his mom and missing her. We talked about that. We talked mm. about his father dating and about a lot of things. Wow. And that was very special because, as I say, we became really good friends. He was a seeker. He wanted to, f he had a, he, he was a searcher. He was looking for things to fulfill his life. He was wondering, I've always really wondered about why, why have I been chosen to do this? Is this the best use of my talent, of my time? I, I would agree that that, uh, that was probably part of his whole being, but it wasn't quite as obvious as he was looking for an answer for that. I think it was more trying to fulfill his musical aspirations, mm. because the one thing he did know was music, and he did know he had a gift, and he did appreciate that. But it wasn't a massive ego, I've got a great voice. Mm. He attributed that as to a gift and to utilize it appropriately and to find some happiness in life. And I think he was also looking for a certain amount of guidance from a more sophisticated world than he was exposed to. Mm. And personally, in my opinion, Colonel Parker was not exactly the best person for Elvis yeah. to have. He did bring this career to Elvis in many ways. And I think Elvis had a great deal of loyalty but my looking at it is from an outsider's point of view was Colonel Parker was not doing right by him. He yeah. was putting him in slop. I think with a good director and a, and a little more counseling and a little in a situation where he was comfortable, he could have really put on a good performance. There were scenes and such that we played that he was really very well. Yeah. He did very well with a good script and a good director. Not that that might have been his final aspirations. Mm -hmm. I think that was always the music, yeah, and that was what was most important to him. Like I said, you being involved in that Star Trek episode, The Cage, and, and what it means to people that are fans yeah. of Star Trek, you being in, in one of Elvis's better musicals, a fun Girls, 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 with the best title, um, you've, you're in a unique position to meet fans that tell you what these, these things mean to them. Is there a common thread between things that, that we see on the screen, on television and movies, and 
and, and what touches us and, and why, we hold, why we hold those things so dear. Why is it Elvis? Why is it, why are we still well, talking? Well, because there's a wholesomeness about it. There's a, I don't want to call it simplicity, but it's somewhere between wholesomeness and the simplicity. It's understandable. It's kind. We're not in a very kind and gentle world right now. Mm. And our attitudes aren't very kind and gentle anymore. Uh, we're losing, except it's hard to notice in the South, but we're losing a great deal of manners on a day-to-day -day basis and courtesies, just minor little courtesies, which is why it's always a kick for me to come to the South. Because I enjoy that where somebody opens the door for you and says things, and oh, may I help you, ma'am? Oh, and thank you, ma'am. You know, I like that. I think that's very sweet. And you miss it in lots of parts of the country, especially the big cities. I think that might be the thing that has made it last, both of those things, yeah. last as long as they have, is because it shows that there is good stuff about most people, and if you emphasize that, and they're passed down. Uh, young children who grow up in families whose parents are into Star Trek or into Elvis, it's, 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 it's almost like a family heirloom that is passed down from one generation to the next. I get some letters you would not believe from Elvis saying, I fell in love you, with you when the thing first came out. My grandfather, you know, I take my daughter, we go and see it whenever it is, we have copies of it, and it's one of my, my I'm divorced now, and but I have my daughter on Saturday afternoon, and all through her youth and such, this has been one of the symbols of, I mean, things like this, that's gotta affect oh. you and touch you. And it's really been a touch point for my daughter and I, would you sign the photo for me, and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm just so moved by it all. And it's nice to feel like you're sort of inspiring people to do nice. I met a girl today, who said her name was Laurel, mm -hmm. and she was actually born on August 16th, 1977. So her birthday, she's an Elvis fan, so her birthday, the happiest day in anyone's life, also holds this part of history in Elvis's you know, world. But she was so excited to meet you. I was just gonna say, did I, you, I met did her. You met yes, her? She, I actually did. She hadn't met many people with her name, and she was so excited to meet you. That must mean so much to see those people like oh, that. Oh, it's it's such a, to be an inspiration to somebody to enjoy life and to be good, I mean, we're here for a very short time. If you're lucky, even you, if you're lucky, you get to my ripe old age, yeah. and hopefully longer, who knows? But there should be some pleasure through all that. It shouldn't all be negative and nasty and ugly and hard work. And even, you don't have to have everything in the world for happiness and pleasure and to enjoy things. Take a walk in the park. <laughs> Buy a hot dog, that's a couple of bucks. Almost <laughs> everybody can afford that. Um, go to outer space watching Star Trek or <laughs> have fun with Girls, Girls, Girls. Laurel Goodwin, thank you so much for being My on pleasure. Gates of Graceland and please come back and see us sometime. Just ask <laughs> and send me an airline ticket. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>